does the NZXT Kraken M22 do a good job while overclocking the Ryzen 7 2700? Hello and welcome. Don't you hate when you search the internet for a specific video only to find out that, well, it just doesn't exist. Uh, well, that's what happened to me. And that's why we're making this video. I went online to see if I could find a video on the NZX2 Kraken M22, and specifically pairing that with the Ryzen 7 2700 or any other Ryzen to do an overclock. And when I couldn't find it, I decided well, this has to be fairly common because I'm doing it with my computer. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna take you through the steps of installing this Kraken M22 on my NZXT H500i. Once we get that installed, I'm gonna do a mild overclock on the Ryzen 7 2700. And we're gonna compare that to the performance and the temps of the previous. So currently right now on the Ryzen 7, I'm just using the stock Wraith cooler, and I do not have an overclock going, but I am installing some new games and I'm awaiting the new Borderlands 3. So I really wanna crank my FPS and everything I possibly can before that game comes out. That's why I bought this system. So let's take a look, let's dive in, and let's find out, does the NZXT Kraken M22 do a good job while overclocking the Ryzen 7 2700. All right, so the hardware I'm working with today is the Aorus X470 Ultra Gaming Motherboard, the, of course, Ryzen 7 2700, the MSI RX 5700 XT Mech Edition uh, graphics card, and then I am running a uh, 3200 Corsair Vengeance RAM. So to be able to benchmark the CPU before we do the overclock in the water cool, we're going to be using Cinebench R20, uh, Ryzen Master to monitor temps. And then later on, I am going to get into some FPS value in Metro Exodus. That being said, my main goal here is basically to up the CPU performance a bit while keeping the temps as low as possible while I'm gaming. That's the most important part. The temps can raise and raise and raise when I'm gaming for an hour or two, and that's what I'm ultimately trying to do is keep them down using this liquid cooler. Let's get in, I'm gonna turn on the Cinebench. Again, there is no overclock at all in my system, so I'm just gonna turn on Cinebench and see what values we get. So my temperature right now is uh, about 37C, 36.75. Um, and I'm not, there's no real load on the CPU at the moment. So I'm gonna do a test on Cinebench with Ryzen Master being open so we can check the temps. And then I'm gonna close it, uh, close Ryzen Master and run Cinebench again to see if it improves our score at all. You know, temps aren't looking too bad. I mean, we're at 52.5. Uh, 53, we're climbing a little bit, uh, but we're kind of between 53, 54. Um, not terrible, honestly. I've seen a lot of videos where uh, temps are reaching 60, 65. That being said though, our, our CPU voltage is at 1.1, and I really think that our CPU voltage could be a bit higher. Uh, we've seen you know, a lot of overclocks where you know, it hits 1.4 even. And uh, yeah, we're not even close to that. So we have a lot of headroom here to be able to move that voltage up. And as far as the temperature goes, even with the, uh, the stock Wraith Spire on here, uh, we're still getting, now we're at 59 degrees uh, Celsius, of course, uh, but that's not terrible. And this is under Cinebench R20. Basically, we have a score of 3198. 
not super impressive. Now let's close Ryzen Master and let's see if we can get a little bit better score here by just closing Ryzen Master. So I don't know the temps, of course, but we didn't really hit above 60C. To me, that's not an alarming at all, an alarming uh, temperature. We could honestly use this stock cooler and probably crank it up a little bit without having to put in the Kraken. But I wanna see if we can go a little bit further using the Kraken and make it a, honestly more stable. Plus my biggest concern is the graphics card. I mean, it really cranks up the heat in there and uh, I'd hate to see uh, the graphics card combined with a higher overclock just melt down the system. So, so the, the, the number to beat here is uh, 3198. It looks like we are surprisingly uh, a little bit faster, which is a little interesting because I didn't know Ryzen Master actually took up that much processing power. Oh, okay, so not much, 3198, we beat it by a whole seven points, but it shows you that even something like Ryzen Master being open can actually affect the score. So here's a few specs on Metro Exodus as far as FPS value goes. Again, we're not really trying to increase that massively, but if, hey, if we get a boost there too, I'll be happy. So I'm gonna bump this up to extreme. Uh, I was at high, now I'm going to ultra and then extreme. So I changed uh, the settings to extreme just to kind of get an idea. And of course the FPS value has dropped 63. I haven't done any overclocking. I haven't done anything extra to the graphics card or to the uh, again, the, the processors. So I'm not expecting to see anything crazy as far as performance goes here, but I mean, I'm still getting 70 FPS here, which is pretty cool. And I'm, I'm not doing anything super intense, but in between 70 to 100 FPS full, and that was super smooth. 50, okay, let's see what we get here. 47, drop to 47, 44 on the ultra settings. So, I mean, we see a little bit of a drop, but really depends on what you're doing. And this is ultra settings. So, man, and it's still killing it. Look at that, I jumped up to 120 frames per second. That's insane. Honestly, personally, I think we have a great, great uh, starting base point here. Looking as anywhere from 70 to 130 frames per second in Metro Exodus with extreme settings, 42, maybe 50% CPU utilization. So I'm just, I'm gonna keep that where it's at and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do the install. That's what I'll uh, transition over to is doing the install, the crack in, doing a slight overclock, and seeing what we get. Okay, thanks for staying with me, everybody. So far, right now, I'm actually just fast forwarding through this install process because we made a full tutorial and how to set this all-in-one cooler up in your system. If you want to check it out, please follow the card that I'm gonna put up here in the video in the top right hand corner. That'll give you an, a how to uh, on the install of this Kraken M22. But we're gonna press forward with the Kraken installed. We're gonna go ahead and do some benchmarking, a little bit of overclocking to the 2700. We're gonna overclock some RAM here and see what kind of specs we get on Metro Exodus. If you did everything right, this is where you should be and this is kind of what the case should look like. The purpose of, of this video is about taking, you know, a, a higher performance processor, liquid cooling it, overclocking it a bit, and seeing if we can't keep it at a reasonable temperature while we're gaming. So that's really what I want to get into next. I'm going to dive in. I'm going to open this up, check out temps. We'll run a few benchmarks, see where we're at just right now without overclocking, do a quick overclock, do some benchmarks, and play some video games. All right, so I have this pulled up, uh, Ryzen Master and Cinebench, and <clears throat> the first thing I notice right off the bat is I'm already hitting CPU voltage a little bit higher, uh, just under regular load. I'm seeing about 1.2 
volts where I was seeing about 1.1 before and my temps are about 32 and it's quite a bit warmer in the room that I'm in currently. Let's just run this test. Let's see where we're at. The score to beat is going to be 3205. So let's see if thermal throttling had anything to do with this test or if we're going to have to overclock to see a good improvement. Okay, we can see it kicking in here. It's going. Not really seeing much over 46, 47 degrees Celsius. It's starting to climb a little, of course, over time that, that can increase. 48 degrees Celsius, 3.4 uh, gigahertz uh, peak speed, which is kind of nice. They're all taking the same load here, 3.4. So our boost clock is gone because our boost clock is typically only on two cores, right? So they're sharing the load equally at 3.4. That's what we want to boost. It doesn't really feel like we're going any faster. In fact, it almost feels like we're going slower. And we're about to hit 50 degrees here. We're just a few point, few hairs away from 50 degrees. There we go. We hit 50. Wow, look at that. We went from 3205 to 3325. Not bad. So we just got 120 points by simply swapping to liquid cooling. Meaning that our system, because it was running hotter, wasn't able to max out its core capability for as long as it consistently has. So that tells me we're gonna have some good room to, to overclock here. All right, let me set that up. We've got our baseline. I'm gonna go through, make some edits, and we're gonna, we're gonna run this test again. Okay, perfect. So all I've done here is I put a slight uh, overclock on the CPU up to about 3.8, raising the voltage up to about 1.4. And then I went ahead and did a simple overclock here on the memory, bumped the voltage up to about 1.35 and ran it at its full 3200 megahertz. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna give this a save. Profile name, let's go 3.3200 RAM. There we go. Profile saved. See how good of a job we did and if we, uh, if we properly Gave a good overclock here. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and check Ryzen Master. And look at that, we do. We have each core is running at uh, 3.8. Our memory clock though, looks like it is quite a bit slower. Okay, let me, uh, let me see if I can't get this back into place here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the reset button on this and see if I can't get that memory completed. Okay, so I figured out what it was. Um, I didn't turn the XMP to custom profile. I had it on a standard setting. So screwed up there, let's boot up. Let's get this going. Still a stable uh, 3,800 megahertz. All right, so I backed off a little bit on the, <clears throat> the memory clock there. I'm gonna go ahead and see if that's gonna help improve here. We're sitting at a solid uh, 38 degrees Celsius. So let's go ahead and see. I think we maxed out at 3.6 megahertz. And this time, let's, let's see what, what happens. But we had a, it was a 3325, that's what it was. So we gotta beat a 3325 here. We've killed a 7700K. But if we could beat the 1700X, I would be extremely happy. We know that this, processor should be able to do that. I think really coming in at the end there, it did a great job. 3779, look at that. We've got over a 400 point increase. Let's run this one more time. I wanna take a look at the voltage and the temps a little more closely. Uh, I got CPU-Z installed just to make sure that everything is good to go here. And it looks like we've got a pretty stable uh, 1.236 volts uh, on the CPU coming in at a 3.8 overclock and then a 
3200 megahertz overclock on the RAM. So now that we have all of that, let's go ahead and run this. Let's see if this overclock is stable. So currently, as far as voltage goes, 1.2 volts, uh, solid there. We're running at about a 63 degree temperature, 65 degrees we've hit. It is performing really well and seems to be fairly stable. So let's see what this score is. 3766. Um, so I'm gonna close everything out and we'll run a quick score here. 3766. 3794, so once again, another 30 points here. I could more than likely, like I said, bump this up to a four gigahertz overclock and be solid. The fact that Cinebench ran twice back to back, I'm extremely happy with. I will put the voltages and all the timings and everything down in the comments below for you guys to check out. All right, so last little stress test here. Just wanna show you guys we are in the extreme mode here for quality. So not really the, the point of this video, but you can see here that the GPU temps are actually much lower than they were. And look at our FPS. 90, 100, 99, 101. I mean, we're getting a steady, steady, steady 100 frames per second. I'm seeing 80, drop to 80, back up to 102. Okay, so at the end of the day, I think what we accomplished here is really impressive. The frames were, were looking great. The liquid cooler is amazing. I mean, we're getting probably negative 10 degrees Celsius from our previous setup using the Wraith Spire. And not only that, the GPU is getting better airflow because there's not a big bulky fan sitting on top blocking up all that air. But really, that's my video, you guys. Uh, I hope you followed along and really enjoyed this process. Again, I will put some of the overclock settings down in the, the bio below. Uh, but really, my goal here was not only to get that video up for you guys to check out, uh, but to see how well this cooler would work on an overclock. A lot of the videos out there use the dual fan or triple fan radiators that of course they're gonna help with an overclock and you can really push the limits with those guys. But I don't have a big enough case for one of those and I know a lot of people do not have a big enough case for one of those. Plus they're gonna be in most cases 30 to $40 more, in which case go buy yourself um, a different CPU and get clock speeds uh, out of the box that are the same as overclocking your current CPU. So really, I met my goal today. I wanted to lower my temps while boosting performance of my CPU and create a good stable environment. We got better FPS value, we got better rendering through Cinebench, and our temps were quite a bit lower. So I'll throw some ending kind of comparisons here for you guys to look at, but I do appreciate you following along. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching everybody. Have a good day.